On January 30th, Shields All Sports, in conjunction with FM Walleyes, presented Lake Winnipeg Ice Fishing Excursion. Tips and tactics to help you successfully land monster Lake Winnipeg greenback walleyes through the ice. The presenters are all members of Shields Pro Staff. Chad Malloy, FM Walleyes Vice President Kyle Agri, and FM Walleyes President Scott Brewer. Now here's Scotty Brewer. We have to be done at 8 o'clock so that you guys have time to go up and shop if you so chose to do that. First off, I'd like to introduce Karen Olson and Joe Finneman. Well, I just wanted to thank you guys for coming. Um, I'm the store event coordinator, so I help put on things like this for for y'all in attendance, and Joe is a fishing shop manager. A lot of you probably know him already. Um, again, just wanted to thank you for coming. And then, like Scotty said, at the end of the night, you guys will all receive an opportunity to get a 20% discount on ice fishing lures with a $50 fishing purchase. Um, so everybody will get one of these. Cool, thanks for coming. Thank you, guys. All right. All right. Let's get the show rolling. I am uh, Scotty Brewer. We also have Chad Malloy, the big man, and the other big man, Kyle Agri. Uh, we're, what our deal is, we like to we like to talk fishing. We like to educate people, uh, educate people about fishing, which is why we're here. Uh, we enjoy this kind of thing, and hopefully, you guys have an enjoyable evening. Okay, uh, first off, let's get Adam. Aiken, can you stand up for a minute? He doesn't know I'm doing this. So. This is Adam. He is a Shields employee. Adam has never been to Lake Winnipeg until last year. There's Adam. After his, what, his second day on the lake, his third day on the lake? That is a 12 pound something. Beautiful fish. So you all got a chance if he can do it. Yep. <laughs> that will catch him. Everybody here can catch him. That's the reason why we go up there. The quest for a master angler. And a master angler, in case you're wondering, is 28 inches long. Lake Winnipeg. One thing, and a lot of you guys have probably heard this before, if you guys are back, if you can't hear us, Wave your hands because we want everybody to hear what's going on. So if you can't hear any time during the presentation, let us know, please. Lake Winnipeg is a huge lake. And you've heard for a long time the adage that it takes a big lake to grow big fish. This is definitely true. This is one of, it's the 11th largest lake in the world, 250 miles long. It is a monster lake. And that's one of the reasons why it has monster fish in it. That's why we like going there. Like I said, we go up there to catch, catch these big fish. And there's lots of them up there. How many of you have never been to Lake Winnipeg? Okay, for all of you guys, I can guarantee you that if you go up there, you take that group, 50% of you will catch the largest fish of your life. Guaranteed. Some of you will catch it numerous times on that trip. That's why we go. To catch fish like these. And everybody does it. Most everybody does it. There is that odd chance that you'll go up there and you won't do very well. But the next time you go, you might catch four baskets. That's just the way it works. Okay, Lake Winnipeg, like I said, it's a huge lake. Most of where our fishing is going to be right down in here. That's where you want to be on the south basin. The two major rivers that flow into Winnipeg are on the south end of the lake, and that's what draws all those big fish down in the wintertime. If you don't have a passport, get one, because you're going to want to, want to use it after the end of tonight. Barbless hooks, two things on this slide are very important. Barbless hooks, if you have a lure tied up, if you got a lure tied up to your rod and you're on the lake, 
it better be barbless. Whether you plan on using that rod or not, if you get checked with by a conservation officer, you will get a ticket. If it's in your tackle box, you're fine. But if it's tied on a rod, make sure the barbs have been pinched down. Well, I, nobody I've talked to has had problems losing fish with the barbs pinched down, so it's, it's not an issue. Make sure they're pinched all the way. Yeah, I mean, if you can, what a lot of guys do is take their pliers, pinch it, and kind of rotate back and forth. Not just crimp it, but kind of rub it back and forth so you almost rub them off. It's real important. And we'll get into a little bit more on the technique side, ways that that'll help you keep those fish if you're worried about losing a fish because of a barbless hook. There's no way around it. You're, you're going to have a barbless hook no matter what. So you got to increase your odds to make sure those fish don't come off. And there are ways to do that. No alcohol is allowed on the ice. There are a lot of people that do it. A lot of your buddies will probably do it, bring a bottle or whatever. What? If you get caught, you're going to get in trouble. So my recommendation is do it at your own risk. It is illegal. Fish location. For those of you guys that are married to your, that really like waypoints, how many of you guys like waypoints? I like waypoints. If you like waypoints, don't go to Lake Winnipeg. Waypoints aren't going to do you any good. Because those fish, if they were there yesterday, they're not going to be there tomorrow. They're not there today. And that's because there's very little structure. There is some structure out there, but very little. And that's why we use waypoints. Those are the Minnesota fishermen. We use waypoints on structure because there's something holding those fish there. These fish are migrating. They're roaming around. They're not going to be there because you put a waypoint there. They're not going to be there the next day just waiting for you. They're going to be moving. One thing that's really important, we talked about it a little bit earlier, water clarity. Uh, one, of, one of the questions was, well, we probably want to fish by the mouth of the rift. Yes, you do. Problem with that is water clarity. As we all know, the red is very dirty, and those fish aren't going to hang out in that super dirty water. So you've got to find that area where there's you have that water clarity, that seam, that mud line, so to speak. If you can find that and get on the edge of that, you can do very well at times. But that's the type of structure that is on Lake Winnipeg. Things like that. Things like current breaks, if there's some current, things like water clarity, that's Lake Winnipeg structure. Okay, this is the south tip. Here's the mouth. That, that dirty water, depending on the time of year, you know, that dirty water could be all the way out in here. You know, that two miles out from the mouth. So you don't know where it is. In two miles, if you're going to drill a hole every 50 yards until you find it, you're going to be tired with four and a half feet of ice. So make, when you move, make big moves until you find areas where you want to fish. Then you can make smaller moves after that. But you know, don't, don't be afraid to move a half a mile. Drill some more holes. Access spots, Chalet Beach, if you're coming in from the west. Matlock, there's two or three different access spots in here, depending on ice conditions and everything else. Some of these conditions, you know, Chalet Beach is usually pretty good, but depending on snow and ice, you might not be able to get on there. So you, you got to have a backup plan. Over here, Patricia Beach, Stony Point, Balsam Harbor, Road 104. I think Balsam Harbor is 101. Road 101. 103, right here is another one we can get on. But if you're going to come here, from here to here is about 16 miles. So depending on, yeah, not the straight line. So depending on where you're getting on at, you know, one of the guys said, "Well, I want to fish by the mouth, so I'm just going to go." No, you're, you're, there's no place to access anywhere in here, except there is a. I think there is, well, there is one. Prudent Creek. Prudent Creek. Um, and Broken Head comes through here. Broken Head River, depending on the time of year. Access is difficult, can be difficult. These fish don't come 
aren't, don't necessarily come cheap because it's a lot of work to get up there. It's a lot of work to drive to the access, unload all your stuff, drive 10 miles to get out to your fishing spot. You know, from the time you leave the casino, I mean, the casino is five miles from the lake. From the time you leave the casino until you get to your fishing spot, it could be two hours. And two hours in the evening again to get back. So you got to be prepared for that. It's a lot of work. It's not like you're going to drive out to a heated fish house, fish for eight hours and drive back. But as you saw in those pictures, the work is worth it. You know, there's no place in the world except for maybe Lake Erie where you can have this kind of fishing. And Lake Erie has many other challenges. Mobility. You want to move and move and move and keep moving. And if you can hire somebody to run an auger for you, that's better yet. <laughs> Portable gear. Extremely important. Portable houses. You know, if you go up in March, hopefully you don't need a house, but never say never. You'll see this a lot. You don't see it around here because people are afraid they're going to fall in. But, you know, there's we got these cracks here. Some of these cracks will open up. They'll be a foot wide. That structure on Lake Winnipeg, there's a lot of people that fish pressure bridges. They fish cracks. Especially the bigger ones. When when you see a big pressure ridge pop up, there's probably a big piece going down too. Which if there's current through that area, which there is by the red, that ice pushing down into the underneath the ice is going to create eddies and stuff. So which will attract bait fish, which will attract big fish. Anything anytime there's a change, any type of a change in the lake, in the ice. That will attract fish. Narrow your search. If you get, you want to get information before you go. There's a lot of places to get information. Uh, internet, Facebook, friends, other people. There's a lot of people going up there. There's always fresh information as to approximately what areas to go to. Move, move, move. Use very aggressive techniques, loud techniques. You know, they'll talk about light targets, things like that. And vary your cadence because the fish are very big. They can be very active, and they'll inhale a bait that that that, that big, and you won't even see it in its mouth. It'll swallow it so fast. And it'll feel like a freight train hit your rod. But there's other times where you got to use something really, really small to get them to bite. There's still walleyes. There's days where they are extremely inactive, and sometimes that's when the small stuff works. Just holding your holding your bait there so it's not moving. Bring them in with one rod and have another one just sitting there, and they'll hit the other one. So you can't just run around all the time gripping these live targets. So, the thing Scott, is, what he's really hitting on is don't be afraid to try the extremes. Very right. slow, very fast, and everything in between. And work with the guys in your group to try to target what those fish are wanting. And pay attention. Pay attention to the weather. It's the same thing. If it's a cold front, they're going to be more lethargic. You know, so use your normal. Everybody, everybody in this room is a smart fisherman. Use those smarts to your advantage. Gear and tackle. We all love gear and tackle, right? The more the better. So, Chad's going to talk about tackle here in a minute. What if there's a secret lure out there that's going to catch all the fish? Anybody believe that there's a lure out there that's going to catch more fish than any other out there on Lake Winnipeg? Certain days there is. Some days there is. Some days that lure ain't going to catch a darn thing. So you're exactly right. There's a lot of different lures that will work, and some days you've got to have that lure or you're not going to catch it, especially the bigger ones. You'll see some guys that have to have a big lure or have a, a live target, a blue live target golden shiner, or a clacking rack. 
you know, a certain clack and wrap. But if you got that lure, you're going to catch a couple of really nice fish. If you don't, you probably ain't going to catch any. It all depends. But there are no secret lures. Just like there's no secret white planks out there either. If I can only bring week to some we did new this year, all three of us decided what are your five, five favorite lures? If you can only go up there with five lures, what would they be? So mine is a golden shiner, live target, blue one. I will use that almost all the time. If it's a full front, uh, use that for half an hour and not catch anything, then I'll switch to whatever else I can find. Chicken wraps, very popular. Bee fish and tackle blade baits. Uh, pink and white is very good. Pink and white is a very good color up there. Lindy no, rattling flyer and chubby darters. Those are my five favorite lures on Winnipeg. And everybody's got different ones. Chad, do you like to go As uh, Scott was saying, this is just kind of personal preference. And um, a big thing when you're fishing, and you, a lot of you know this, is confidence. What's going to be something that you're confident in? And uh, that's kind of why we looked at these five favorite lures. Not that they're the secret lure, it's just, hey, everybody's got their own personal opinions. And um, for me, I like the uh, live target at the top of the list, the blue one. See a theme running here that's, uh, that's showing up several times. Uh, another favorite of mine is taking a gold colored live target, painting some perch stripes on it, maybe a little uh, orange on the belly, make it look like a little perch. That's an option. Um, RJ Lures makes some great painted blade baits. Not very big, but they make a lot of noise, a lot of rattle, a lot of vibration. Great lures up there. Pink and white's my favorite. Um, flutter spoons have been a popular thing lately. There's a lot of brands out there. Um, some different fish bones ones are some of my favorites. And um, the old standby, the uh, Buckshot Rattle Spoon by Northland Tackle. Again, just some, some of my personal favorites. <coughs> Mine are totally different. Yeah, really. I yeah. like, my number one lure is the blue live target. <laughs> so, totally different than everybody else. I, I don't like to be the same. Uh, another, I, my favorite two lure setup is the live target and a macho minnow. I like to have that vertical and then the horizontal with the live target just for a one-two punch. Um, the new UV buckshot rattle spoons, I got some of these sitting up here, they have them upstairs. Uh, the UV is, is a pretty hot item right now. Um, hopefully the fish can see them better, or it's either that or just we can see them better. I don't know which one yet. But those are nice. Uh, flutter spoons, like Kyle mentioned, there's tons of them. They have some new BMCs upstairs, the Tinglers. Um, and the lure last year, Brad's boy, uh, what's Brad's last name? Yeah, no, Mac. Uh, oh. Macwitz. Yeah, Brad it's Macwitz. Good. His boy, I gave him one of these. How old is he? He's probably 10. 10. He caught the biggest fish of his life using a live target crappie, the larger size. And I, it was about, a, it was over 10 pounds, I believe. So he was tickled pink, and he must have thanked me a hundred times for that lure, and he probably has it framed at his house. I talked to him today, he still still has not let his dad touch it. <laughs> <laughs> so he wasn't gonna let his dad use that lure. You know, as you can see, live target. If you don't have a live target, uh, you're wasting your time. Um, I bet most of the larger fish are gonna come on that. And it could be just because you know, if everybody's using that lure, that's what they're biting. But they're using it for a reason. And it's not always the color. I think it has a lot also to do with the rattle inside it, the way it sounds, the shape of the lure. The whole, it just has the whole package. So they have lots of nice colors. There's a form for custom ordering. We'll talk about that later. Got to have proper gear when we go up there. Um, long rods. Nice backbone. Joe has done a great job of stocking what we need upstairs. But this one is 36. You know, for me, 
This is probably the shortest rod I want to have is a 36. That works pretty, you know, it's got a good backbone on it and it's got a good, you know, enough tip in there where if that fish surges, you still got enough pressure on it. And that's important when we're fishing with wireless hooks. And all the way up, I think that's probably more like a 42 inch or a 48. 42. You know, outside, guys are using four footers even. So it's real important, long rods, medium heavy, medium to heavy. Um, lots of great rod choices here. And we'll have a lot upstairs and Joe's got that special going on. Um, as, well, as, top of reels. I like to use my summer reel when I'm using, when I'm up at Lake Winnipeg. The reason for that is I got a better drag system on it. Um, you want to be careful with the summer reels. You want to make sure they don't have a lot of grease because if it gets really cold, that grease is going to get thick. You just want a light coating of oil. Okay, so you want to be careful there, but it's got a great drag. You want to make sure to watch your drag, make sure it's all set before you start fishing in case you get that big fish on because they hit like a freight train. Uh, what do I like to put on my rod? I like to use Fireline Crystal myself. Uh, I usually use 10 4, but sometimes we use 14 yeah, it's whatever you use. The fish up there are not line shy for the most part. The water, a lot of times, is pretty tinged. It's off color. Um, it's clear. It's not. Um, it's not tannic. You know, it's not brown. It's kind of greenish, murky. So, but and then I like to take the smallest swivel I can find, and then I'll tie on a piece of fluorocarbon. And the reason I like to do that is, fluorocarbon is a little bit stiffer. Okay, and when I'm using uh, spoons, it's not going to flip up as much and catch on my line. Also, I kind of like to know when my fish is getting close to. A lot of guys will put the leader equal length to the ice so they know when their fish is at the bottom of the ice so that they're, they're real careful now. A couple of ways I thought about it. Right guys? Yep. Any? About six inches more than the depth of the ice. When you see that swivel come up through the hole at the surface, you know you're six inches from the bottom of that hole. You got about to six it. feet long then. Some days, <laughs> about six feet long, some days, yep. Depends how many extensions you have on your arm. So, you know, just a bunch of the lines. Uh, I really like the Berkeley Trilene, uh, fluorocarbon, and the fire line. So lots of great lines out there too. got to read the directions. This could be you guys. That's why we're all going. So is everybody, let's all practice our pose for a big fish. <laughs> yeah, you got to hold it out here. Get your fingers behind. So, I mean, be prepared. That's all I can say up there. Uh, like I mentioned, the swivel. And make sure to pay attention to details. Make sure you tie your knots properly. Uh, fluorocarbon, you want to make sure you wet the line and everything when you're using mono. Make you're, here we're catching probably your biggest fish of your life, you don't want to mess it up. So pay attention to details. Uh, I know Scott and Kyle like to use the Aquatech swivels. Um, they're neutrally buoyant, clear. Anything to add guys? Good quality snaps. Good quality yep. snaps. You get a big fish, you don't want that snap coming loose. And it's happened. I know guys can tell stories of that. You don't want that. You want to make sure you got a good stout snap that's going to hold when you set that hook on that big fish. Some of our favorite lures, lots of lipless crankbaits. Uh, they all catch fish. They're all phenomenal lures. We sometimes like to upgrade with some triple grips. So you can look at those if you're interested. Might give you a little bit of extra, you know, it's just got this gap. And obviously, uh, whoever was fishing with that did pitch their barbs down, so they're gonna get a ticket. <laughs> Spoons. Like we said, the UV Buckshot, the Macho Minnow. There's some other great spoons out there, Jiggy Spoons <coughs> and others. And these are the Flutter Spoons here. Um, some of these are specialty items. We may have it here in the store. And some of these, they have 
up in Canada too. So if we miss something there, we can pick stuff up there on the way too. We'll probably, a lot of guys stop at Pro-Am also. The difference between your, your spoons in the first slide that Chad was showing and the flutter spoons, the first one, or first slide, they're weighted. They're heavier. They're just gonna yep. bounce right to the bottom. The flutter spoons are a lot lighter. They're about the thickness of a spinner blade and they're gonna slow this, they're gonna fall very slowly. And I know Joe's done a good job of getting a lot of those in inventory. Uh, these are the blade baits that a lot of guys had a lot of great luck here in the, last year and the year before. Uh, there's a good video out in in, um, in depth outdoors. It has a great video on Lake Winnipeg. Jig and a minnow combination is not out of the picture. It's not all about the live target and those other lures, although they shine. Sometimes it's just a jig and a minnow. Uh, actually, I want to go back. I think that's coming up anyway. Uh, so dead stick live minnows, so they call them Wileys up there. A lot of guys bring those. Um, so you want to bring a, at least a bucket. Depending upon the temperature, you want it, might want an insulated bucket or keep it warm so it doesn't freeze all the way up on you too. So I know a lot of guys with the live minnows, uh, the last couple of years, we're taking the bait pucks. Take that bigger size bait puck, throw a handful of minnows, just a little bit of water in there, keep it closed. That way it's, you keep it in your pocket, it's not necessarily going to freeze. Bait. Um, tipping with artificial meat can increase your effectiveness. Done a lot of that. Live minnows, salted shiners. We're at the end of the season now, going up there in March. They may or may not have salted minnows up there, the shiners. So back home, we've had really good luck doing our own. And the nice thing is the shiners up there have been in the freezer all year long. They're old, they break apart pretty easily. Two nights before you leave, stop at Shields and buy a couple scoops of fathead minnows. You uh, drain all the water, throw in some pickling salt, they're done. They're gonna die. Um, and then you're gonna take those drain the water, then you're going to put them into a plastic baggie, lay them flat, take a cookie sheet, lay it in there, lay a couple bags on the cookie sheet, put another cookie sheet on top, so you don't want to squish them, but you just want a little bit of weight on there to try to keep them flat, okay? You don't want them all curved and everything. And then, uh, then you put them in the freezer. Overnight, they'll be nice and frozen, keep them frozen, <clears throat> and then they're all ready to go. You just Hook them on. It's great for if you want to just use a, you know, a, a head of a minnow. You just pinch the head off, and you're all ready to go. So we've had really good luck with that. I know some guys too have goofed around. They'll put a little bit of Coke in there and freeze it with Coke, just to have them flavor. Coca Cola. Coca Cola. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Dr Pepper. <laughs> a tracker and scents. Um, great stuff. This is Pro Gear. Uh, I know I'm not sure if they still have it in stock upstairs. They're all out. Uh, when we get to Canada, we'll be at Pro Am Tackle. They have a lot of it in stock. We can pick it up there. Um, if you don't like your buddies, you have some samples here. What you can do is tell them that they have to put a little bit on their finger and rub it really good into the lure. All right. So take a whip with us, and, and you know what I'm getting at. But if you really like them, I wouldn't suggest them do that. Just those buddies you don't care for. If, if the bite is really on up there, if those fish are really moving, they're really active, you're catching fish, forget about throwing minnows on. Just put a little bit of that pro gear on. A lot of days, that's all you need. Yeah. Um, Northland has an impulse. They have perch eyes, and these are minnow heads and artificial. I haven't had a chance to try them, but I'm going to give them a try this year. So that's another thing just to try. Um, the plastics are probably going to stay on there better. And there's different tricks. You can trick out some of your spoons with a, a snap instead of a um, split ring. You could put a dual snap on there so that you can take the treble hook off and then you spear the minnow head or the plastic on there and then put it back on. That way it won't come off. Tackling equipment, electronics, have to have electronics. I mean, they're, and it's so much fun plus. So uh, have a great flasher unit or the LCD sonar. Um, you want to have your GPS so you know where you're going so you don't get lost in case there's a whiteout. Map chips are great and there's some great mapping apps. Um, on your phone you can get the Navionics chip 
or the Navionics app. I'm not sure if that will cover Canada though. I haven't checked on it. I don't think it does. Yeah, you can get the Canadian, the, the Canada chip if you want from Navionics. <laughs> two flashers. Uh, last couple years, I was bringing two flashers up, and you see how far these holes are. They don't overlap because we have the transducer down so that it's right at, you know, at the bottom of the ice. Well, some places were maybe in eight, nine feet of water, and there's five feet of ice, so we're only in four feet, five, four to five feet of water. So your cone angle is, is pretty narrow. It's maybe covering this much straight down the hole. So I see a fish here. I don't see it on that one. I might see, if they're both blinking, I got two fish going. So it's a lot of fun. Although last year it was cold and so I shared a shack with a guy. We we're both sitting next to each other, me and Don. I was using two rods and he was just using one and he was out fishing me and finally I said, I'm just gonna put that other one away. I paid more attention to my one rod, did everything correctly, concentrated. I caught more fish with one rod rather than monkeying around with two. You would think you'd catch more with two presentations you don't, you, you pay more attention to the one, take care of it, do things right, and you're gonna come out ahead, I think. Thank you. Chad did a great job talking about some of the different lures that we use while we're up there fishing on Lake Winnipeg, and uh, Scott did a, a good job of explaining some of the dynamics of Lake Winnipeg and, and why fish are in certain locations, why they're there. I don't want to scare anybody off, but I do want to make sure if any of you, whether you are traveling with our group, um, we have a large group going up in March, or whether you're going to venture out on your own, that you're prepared because this is a huge body of water. There are a number of challenges we have to pay attention to. First off, if you look at this picture, um, you see uh, Mr. Kula's moon mobile here, his ATV with these tracks on it, and um, if you look in the background, you've got a whole line of frazzle ice. Basically what happens frequently up there is that the ice will freeze, you know, and it can be two, three, four inches thick. We get a big north wind. That 250 mile lake, I mean, that wind gets a run at it, and uh, here it'll pile up and, and sh make these shards of ice actually come up out of the, out of the water, and then it'll refreeze. So now you've got a, a big minefield that you're traveling through up here. What, what you might not be able to see is that there's a line of this frazzle ice right here, but behind it, it goes on for miles. It goes on and on and on for miles. So we need to be prepared. We've often talked, Scott and I and, and Chad and others have talked about the fact that if there's a testing ground for ice fishing equipment, this is it. And, and if you can come home and your equipment's all together in one piece, you're, you're doing pretty good. Okay, this, it's, it's rough, it's rough up there. And um, just to share a few examples, again, you don't have to have the full tricked out rig to be up there and catch fish. But you know what, it's kind of fun sometimes to see what some people are doing. And this is an individual who's taken a snowmobile and uh, he's one of the members of the Canadian club, the Wham Club out of Canada. And he took this sled and he, he tricked it out for ice fishing, okay? He's got the uh, auger rack on the front because if you let your auger bounce around, there's nothing going to cause more damage than, uh, than those auger blades and that flighting, uh, ripping and tearing at the other gear you have stored with it. He's got a big box mounted to the back of the sled. And you see on the inside of that box, we've got propane tanks, heaters, uh, ice gear, tackle, rod box. Everything he needs to go ice fishing is basically stowed in that tackle box securely and tightly so as you're traveling from one place to another, it's not going to get bounced around. That's the key. There's never a short trip on Lake Winnipeg. You're always talking minimum four miles, five miles, upwards to 15, 20. Um, I know Jay here's probably put 50, 100 miles on his rig in a, in a weekend, and, and that's no problem. And so you got to have it packed and prepared so you can get from one place to another. Um, you got a little place right here, tough to see, but where his portable fish house, his pop-up fish house uh, stows away. A, a great example of a rig put together for Lake Winnipeg. You can do the same with your ATVs. You'll see a lot of folks up there with, with our group with uh, your side-by-sides your with the tracks. 
Um, you're going to see the big gators here with the tracks on it and all the, the pop-ups and the flip-over houses in the back. Um, these are great because if you've got the cab, nice traveling in that, nice comfortable. You can ride around in your, in your hoodie. Um, here we've got Jay with his ATV with the tracks, all his rod mounts on the side. His, even has his Lowrance uh, mounted to the handlebars for the GPS unit. Okay, you, there's no limit to what you can do up there. Keep in mind, it's rough country, it's rough terrain, and uh, it's not easy going. Bring your auger. <laughs> but, this is an auger last year with an extension, and it is not hitting water yet. Last year in March, we were drilling holes around the outside of our primary hole so we could get the handlebars down beneath the surface of the ice to, to break through. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Obviously, it's worth it, but it's a lot of work. So as we look at our packing list, what are we going to bring along? We're going to bring an extension. If you haven't bought an extension, don't bother with the short ones. Don't bother with the 12 inches. Buy the 18, 20 inch extension. If you are on our email list, we do an email list to people going with our group. If you're not in our group, let me give me your email. I'll give you the, the address or I'll give you the updates as we have them available. We keep tabs on what the thickness of the ice is, uh, what you're going to need, what the current conditions are. So we've never needed two extensions, and I hope this year we don't, but you never know. Uh, your portable GPS. Make sure somebody in your group has a good GPS. As Brenton said, mark your access point where you access the lake. Where's the truck? Now, I've been on Lake Winnipeg in a whiteout. Beautiful morning. About 1 o'clock after lunch, the, the, the front came through. It was a whiteout. I have never lost my sense of direction like I did that day. I could not have found my way off the ice without a GPS. Um, we were to the point of having conversations of, of pitching the tent, the, the pop-up, and sleeping out there if necessary. Um, so have that GPS. You've got to have it. It doesn't matter if it's now in January, if it's in March. You know, some days you hit good weather, some days you hit brutally cold weather. It's not uncommon to be below zero. Middle of March last year, we were, what, 10, 12 below zero in the mornings. And um, make sure you dress in layers. You have plenty of clothes. You have plenty of equipment to keep yourself warm. The style of fishing up there is moving, being active, moving around. You need to be able to be out in the elements, really, to be successful. That's important. Um, We've got over here in the corner by Scott's head there. Just an example, this is a suit that Shields has sold quite a few of this year. If you don't have a winter ice suit, take a look at these because they're not only a bulletproof suit and a warm suit, but they also will float. So if you do go through in, in late fall, um, if you do go through early ice, whatever it might be, that's going to float you. That, that's a nice security to have. As far as the equipment, ATVs, snowmobiles, things like that, um, it really depends on the conditions of the ice at the time you're going. It's one of the benefits of going with a big group. It's one of the benefits of being able to have a contact in Canada. Check on the conditions, know what they are, and make sure you're able to be flexible. You don't want to go up there with an ATV if there's six foot snow drift, right? Makes sense. Same thing is if all the snow melts off in, in the middle of March, a snowmobile isn't going to get you very far. You're going to be slipping around. So you need to know what to bring. Planks, later in the year, sometimes we need to cross cracks. And so have those planks available if that's the case so you can cross those cracks and get, up, get over them safely. Um, an ice well, I want to mention that. They sell them upstairs. And what it is, it's a mesh bag. So let's look at the next item on the list, our camera and our video camera. These are a fish of a lifetime. We're hoping everybody catches the biggest fish of their life. What are you going to do when you get that big fish? Right? You're going to be doing your touchdown dance, right, in the end zone. Um, what, what I suggest is be prepared. Have that ice well. Okay? You land the fish on the ice, you unhook it, you put it in the mesh bag, you put it back in the water. Then you do your dance, your high fives, your rooting and hollering, calm yourself down, get your buddy with the camera. Pull the fish back out, take a quick photo, and release that fish. Now, obviously, it's different if you're going to keep it, put it on the wall. Everybody, hey, if you, if you catch a trophy and want to do that, great. But you may catch multiple fish during the course of a, uh, an excursion. 
and you want to practice good catch and release, so that's a recommendation. Um, your cell phone. Make sure you check with your carrier before you go up there. Different plans in Canada, different plans in the United States. You want to make sure that you're not going to get surprised by a bill that you didn't expect. Especially data. Yeah, and especially data plans. Yep. Um, your shore lunch. It is permissible to clean your fish on the ice. It's permissible to go ahead and fry them up while you're up there. Remember, that doesn't mean you can catch another limit. That does count towards your daily limit, but it is makes for a fun time out on the ice. Some other tips. Go with the group. It's always more fun with the group. We're not fishing on a 20 yard by 50 yard reef up on uh, the northwest uh, angle, right? There's plenty of room. Bring a group. Make it a fun time. Hire a guide. Especially if you're going up for a few days, hire a guide. Let them take you out. Get you a feel for what's going on. Get you up to speed in terms of what's been working lately and then go out on your own. Make your lodging reservations early. Uh, I know for our group in March, the day after we left last year, the entire lodging reservations at the casino where we stayed were booked up for this year. Got to get ahead of the game. Become a member of FM Walleyes or WAM. How many of you are FM Walleyes members? Fantastic. Do we have any WAM club members? Come on, raise your hand in the back of the room. I know we've got a couple. Um, great organizations to help you stay in touch with what's going on up on Lake Winnipeg. WAM is the Walleye Anglers Association of Manitoba. They're a walleye club based out of Winnipeg. I'll tell you what, we wouldn't be here tonight doing this seminar and talking about these fish if it weren't for these folks because they were the ones who helped start this all and get this going and it's there real generosity and hospitality and willingness to share what they have up there that has made this grow to the point where it is today. Um, FM Walleyes, if you're a member, great. If you're not, think about it. Family memberships, 25 bucks a year. Great group of people. If you are a member, get involved, get active, be a part of the club because you'll meet great people and you'll learn a lot. Our excursion, our trip in March. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we've got activities in the evenings uh, back at the casino. We handle this in a way where we do not charge. We do not charge an X number of dollars for a ticket. What we do is we come on in that night and we have some raffles, some games, some things that we uh, have for fun. And all the money that's contributed to those raffles and those games goes to pay the cost of providing dinner both Friday and Saturday night. It's a whole lot of fun. And I'm going to tell you, if you've been there before, we have really stepped up. Uh, Brenton and Craig uh, and Scott have really stepped up our raffle prizes this year. We've got some good stuff on the docket. And just to wrap up, um, and I would just mention too, if you are involved with that trip, some guys come up early, and, and that's great, that's great. A little secret, if it were me, I'd probably add my vacation days to the end of the trip, because then you'll know where everybody else caught them, right? Um, some contact information, we have these sheets up here, you're welcome to grab them if you want on your way out. South Beach Casino, Pro-Am Tackle, Bobby and Brett are fantastic resources up there in Winnipeg. They'll set you up with licenses, they'll get you your bait, your frozen shiners, anything you need. Lee Nolden, there's many guides out on the lake, there's many of them, there's great guides. Lee is one of the best. Good, good guy to get a hold of if you want to get set up up there on the lake. Contact information here for Scott, for Chad, for myself. Feel free to call us anytime. It's, it's our mission kind of to share the information to help everybody be successful.